Hello and welcome to another episode of Excel Statistics. Today we are talking about correlation and simple regression. Uh, we'll start with our sample data set we have here. We have a list of ads spending along with sales. In our previous videos we have talked about um, analyzing a single data point or variable uh, among different samples. Today we're going to be talking about multiple variables and how they relate to each other. So between our ads and sales, we are expecting that our ads is going to help us predict um, the amount of sales we are going to have. So we want to see how much correlation there is between the two. Our first way to do this is to use our data analysis tool pack. We'll go in here, up data analysis, go to correlation. Here for our input range, we're going to select both columns of data. We have this grouped in columns. It's like my labels, like my output here next to my data. Now that we're done, we get our output. Notice our correlation between ads and ads is uh, one, which is perfect positive correlation, and sales to sales is one. Um, our correlation values will range from negative one to positive one, which are both of those being perfect correlations. Um, positive one being a perfect positive correlation where one value um, as one value increases, so does the other, and negative one being as one value increases, the other decreases. Uh, a correlation of zero equals no correlation. And so we see here our correlation between sales and ads is this 0.75 number. And that tells us it's a pretty strong correlation, and it's also a positive value, which means that they are both moving in tandem as one increases, the other does as well. Now this works really well if we have um, a lot of different variables and so we can get a nice table out here that tells us everything. But sometimes if we just need the one correlation, we can uh, simply do a, another formula here. We look at the formula Corel. In Excel, this lets us just grab our two sets of values we have. So right, one, two. And again, that will get out the same value we have there, no differences. Again, just a matter of preference. If you only have one to do, that might be fast and easy for you. If you have three, four plus variables, uh, doing the table in the data analysis tool pack might be a little faster. So now that we can tell that these variables are fairly highly correlated, um, we might want to use these to actually do a prediction to do a linear regression. The quickest way for us to do that is to start with um, actually doing a chart and looking at this visually. So, get uh, my data here and then go to my insert menu and adding a scatter chart. The scatter chart we can see we've got our, our data points on here. We've got this here. If we hover over, is uh, that second data point. We have 1.9 in ads and 87 in sales. And so we can see how everything flows here. And it looks like we've got probably some positive correlation, which we saw from our correlation there. As our ads value is going up, our sales are going up as well. So to do our regression, here we can right click on any of the data points. We can go to add trend line. And we see right away we have a nice little dashed line. Uh, so what we have from this dashed line is the line with the least amount of error. So if you take the value from this line down to this data point and we calculate that error, and then we take the point from this line to that data point, and so on for every data point in the set. Um, and we add up all of that error in an absolute manner. Um, we will get the least amount of data point from any other possible line that could be drawn through this data set. So this is called the least squares regression. And the point here is that we're trying to get a line that uh, can give us a guideline of where we would expect our data to fall. Well, this is helpful. Um, to, to see visually, uh, we also want to know some formulas behind this. So here are my format trend line that comes up. I'm going to click display equation on chart and we'll display our R squared value. That up here so we can see a little better. Now we see our equation. We've got a Y equals 1.893X plus 85.774. Uh, anyone who remembers uh, back to your days in uh, high school algebra, uh, this would be our equation for a line where we've got our y equals mx plus b. So this b value is 85.774. 
is our y-intercept. This is the value we expect our line to hit, at which point our x value, or the amount we are spending on ads, is equal to zero. So if we substitute zero for the x, this term goes away, and we're left with the 85774, which is where this line would hit right over here at zero. And then for every one uh, additional unit we're spending on sales, we expect our, or on ads, our sales is going to go up 1.893. And that's the slope of the line. Being a positive number, it's going to go up. Were this a negative coefficient, uh, we would see this line trending downwards. This R squared value is the square value of our um, correlation we had. So if we take that times itself, we'll see we'll have 0 0.5729. Um, this value is or R squared, it's uh, considered the percent variation in our sales that is explained by our ad spending. So essentially 57% of our values are explained, meaning that there's still another 43% that we really don't know what's causing that variation. So there's other factors that are involved. Well, that's handy to know. Uh, it's also not quite sufficient. There is a little bit more we would like to know for this. And for that, we are going to need to use the data analysis tool pack again. We'll go back in here and we will find our regression. Here we'll have our y range. Again, like we have from our days in algebra, uh, the y is always our vertical axis. X is always our horizontal. Uh, so the y is the, known as the dependent variable. It's the one that we think depends on the value of the other variable. So in this case, we believe that sales is dependent upon our ad spending. So we will select sales as our Y and ads as our X. I selected my labels and I'm going to select an output range here underneath our chart and we will see this summary output that has come up. So we notice right away this multiple R is our Correlation we calculated earlier. Our R squared is just that squared value that tells us uh, what we saw up there in the chart. Uh, the adjusted R squared, we'll talk about when we get to multiple correlations. This is probably a, a very important value for us when we get there. We look down here at our ANOVA chart. Uh, we want to pay attention to the significance F variable. This is one that's going to tell us whether or not this model itself is actually statistically significant. Uh, we can think of this value kind of like our alpha or as a p-value if you're familiar with those. Uh, so this is giving us that it's about a 2.9% chance that this model is uh, basically a random fit that just happened to occur and really has no correlation at all. So that's a good sign. Anything under 0 0.05 means that we can uh, have some amount of confidence and or we can at least have that 95% confidence in our model. So we can know that we can be 95% sure that uh, we are explaining 57% of those values. Now down here at the bottom, we see our intercepts. We've got our coefficient and our ads, our coefficients for our intercept and for our ads. This is uh, equivalent to our y equals mx plus b up there. We've got a 1.893 and 85.774. So we can use this to actually do a prediction and put together our um, estimated values. So if we wanted to know, um, say, what the value of sales might be if we were to spend four on ads, we can do that one of two ways. We can either calculate our y equals mx plus b, so we can take our m, being our slope of our ads, times our x, which I said was four, plus our intercept, and we can get that value. Um, another kind of shortcut way um, I also like to do this is by putting a 1 here next to my intercept, a 4 next to my ads, I can use a little formula called sum product. And this will let me select multiple arrays. I'm going to select that array for array 1 and this array for array 2. What this formula will do is it will take the first value in each array and multiply them together. So 1 times 85.77 is 85.77. And then I'll take the second value times the second value in the other one, so four times 1.89, uh, which is what we did on the other one. And so by doing that, we can 
see if we do get the same output. And what's nice about these is it lets us change if we want to try 5 or 2.7. Those values change for us automatically. And now we have our estimates. That's really all we have to talk about for uh, correlation and linear regression. This is the simple linear regression. Stay tuned for our next video in about a week and you will see uh, multiple regression where we will add in uh, some additional variables to our data set. So rather than just one x variable to explain our y, we'll be talking about multiples of those. We'll look forward to seeing you then.